Andrade Bug String. A useful function, but only during play mode. What if there was a way to have this information in editor mode? Unfortunately, this isn't quite so simple. Why? I have no idea, but I will show you how you can do it anyway. In this tutorial for the Unreal Engine, you will learn how to draw world space debug strings in editor mode without the need to enter play mode. The code is available on GitHub. The link is in the description if you want to get straight to the sauce. In the editor, create an actor component. To do this, go to Tools, then New C++ Class. Instead of using the common classes, view all classes and then search for debug. Scrolling down, click on Debug Draw Component to extend it. Once selected, click Next. Name your new class something appropriate for your project and create the class. With the header file open, you should see something similar. Starting with the generated class, add this constructor and three virtual functions to override, along with a variable. Create Debug Scene Proxy, which returns a Debug Scene Proxy Object Pointer. The debug scene proxy object contains all the information to be drawn like boxes, cones, lines, text, etc. Get debug draw delegate helper is required for the debug text to render and calc bounds is used for culling. The variable is for use with the delegates that Unreal uses to collect the data for and to draw the debug text. Moving on to the other classes, starting with the delegate helper which extends Debug draw delegate helper, you may recall that this was the variable type in the component class. In this we're going to have an override for draw debug labels, which handles the actual drawing of the debug text. A helper function to set the data required, using a scene proxy object reference as an input and an array containing the text data to be drawn. The debug scene proxy class that was mentioned earlier will have a non-default constructor which takes in a primitive component pointer and a scene proxy data pointer, and a variable of the same scene proxy data struct seen in the constructor. This is just a handy struct, useful for storing and passing data. Lastly, let's create the scene proxy data struct. In this we're going to declare another struct, efdebugText. This is a helper struct to make it easier to store text data, which I definitely did not copy and paste from the nav mesh scene proxy data struct. We also need an array for all the text we're going to store. Moving into the CPP file, let's implement the functions that we previously laid out, starting from the top of our header file. The debug scene proxy constructor is fairly straightforward. Draw type tells the engine how to render the debug shapes. View flag name refers to a value that we will set later, so I'll set it as debug text for now. Let's copy the proxy data passed into the constructor into the local variable, and add a for loop to add data from the proxy data into their respective arrays. Here is a list of all the arrays and types you can store data for. Now for the core rendering code for the debug text. In short, the canvas draws the text projected properly into screen space and depending if it's in the view or not. This code was taken from the nav mesh debug renderer component with very few changes. The setup from proxy method simply takes in the scene proxy and copies the text data into the delegate helper's local array. Finally, back to the debug render component, implementing the constructor. The only thing to do here is to add a custom engine show flag. This is done with a call to register custom show flag and will present a check option in the viewport that will be used to control whether or not the text can be seen. Make sure the first input is the same as the value set for view flag name set earlier in the debug scene proxy constructor. The create debug scene proxy data will be where we tie all the classes together first create the proxy data and add some text. Next, create the scene proxy object as this is what will be returned, passing in a reference to the object itself and a reference to the proxy data. Next, let's call that little helper function inside the delegate helper. This is important for text rendering but not required for any other type of debug rendering. And finally, let's return the scene proxy object. Lastly, Let's implement the override for calc bounds. For now, 
I'm just going to return a bounce that has a minimum of minus 1000 and a maximum of 1000 on each axis. Before building and moving into the editor, add these changes to the debug strings component U class decorator. With that, let's build and start up the engine. You might not see anything at first, and that's because we haven't added the component to anything. For demonstration purposes, I have added the component to a simple blueprint actor. Afterwards, we need to enable it by heading to show, and then down the list we should see an option that says debug text, like what we set for the custom show flag. Clicking on that, you should now see the text rendered in the editor without needing to enter play mode. I hope this tutorial helps. Hit the like button if this helped you out and subscribe for future game development content. Thank you for watching.